Barakat to Yahweh, Barakat to Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well. Peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect, you Akim and Fiyakwathim, that believe in his truth, that believe in Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And believe in his truth with your whole heart, mind, body, and spirit. And who are waiting for these last and these few prophecies that have to happen in the earth. Before the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who's coming back. You know, when he comes back, he's gathering the elect of the nation of Israel. And he's going to put all of these other nations under his subjection. All right, every knee is going to bow to Yahweh Shai. Just doing an up, uh, um, a follow-up video, you know, to a video I did yesterday, which was going into uh, the book "One Hundred Years of Lynchings." You know, and Esau is gonna pay. You know, payback's a bitch. You know, you're gonna pay for the things that you have done unto our people. You know. Within slavery And post slavery And I don't want to hear that Oh we're not our, our, our Forefathers Alright The scripture says that the children Shall complain of an ungodly Father because they shall be Reproached for his sake So all you're hearing is complaining From, from, from them Because they're being Reproached you know for the things that that their forefathers have done which in the reincarnation you are your forefathers the book of Sirach 41 and 7 is the scripture that I quoted the children will complain of an ungodly father because they shall be reproached for his sake and what is a reproach all right a reproach is when you're being paid back here it is you inherited the wealth the estates all right the money all right the status the fame of your forefathers but now shameful spewing is upon your glory now you don't want to deal with the other aspect of that you got to take both you took the glory you took the fame you took the inheritance you took the estates so now you got to deal with the reproach the word reproach means to address someone in such a way as to express disapproval or disappointment and the heavenly father whose name is Yahweh, is disappointed at you and he's crying out against you by way of the mouth of his prophets. He said, prophesy against Mount Seir. And to grab the scripture which shows that the Heavenly Father is disappointed at you. The scripture says right here within the book of Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus said Yahweh of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me. Unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that touch of you touch of the apple of his eye. All right, you have touched the apple of the Lord's eye, man. Now, going to the, the main one, Zechariah 1 and 15, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped for the affliction. All right, you helped forward the affliction upon the children of Israel. And the Heavenly Father set you up to do it. Yahweh set you up to do it. But he set you up. That's the point. The fact that you did it, you have pulled a punishment upon you that is so great. The word displeased is the word kwasap. And it means to be angry, to be wroth, to provoke to wrath or anger, to put oneself in a rage, anger oneself. So Yahweh by is 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 this shows a disapproval. He's angry at the things that you have done, and you have the freaking audacity to make as if. 
All right, you're not worthy to be punished for the things that you have done. The scripture says that the that the heavenly Father, all right, Yahweh, will uh, uh, visit, all right, the iniquity of your forefathers upon you. The book of Exodus twenty and five. The book of Exodus thirty four and seven. The book of Numbers 14 and 18, the book of Deuteronomy 5 and 9 says the same thing. All right, that the, that the Most High Heavenly Father will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon their children. Now I'm going to read the book of Exodus 34 and 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the the the, the children's children until the third and fourth generation. See? So here it is. You're thinking that you're acquitted. You're thinking that you're no longer guilty. But the transgressions and the iniquity of your forefathers are being carried out on you. Or, and about to be carried out on you. And not only did they do lynchings during slavery... And they ramped up after slavery. But the modern day lynchers, all of the jigs that you're killing in cold blood in the streets, the ones that your police officers are choking out, and you think that you're not going to be reproached for this? All right, the scripture says that the blood of the, of the righteous crieth out. All right, the book of 2 Ezra 15 and 8. I hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely committed. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely committed. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Yeah, because when you kill, you know, a person, they their spirit goes before Yahweh Shai. And the scripture that proves that is 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So every spirit that you have killed have went and testified before the throne of Yahawashai against you, against the atrocities that you have done, and how much more so the righteous, all right, who die innocently because of their, 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 their faith in Yahawashai, their sins were covered, so therefore sin was not imputed unto them. The time is coming where you're about to be avenged because you're not done. You still got more work to do. The scripture speaks about the sword being given into the hand all right, of the slayer. All right, the time of Jacob's trouble is at hand and you're going to kill more of the righteous. But because of their blood that you shed, guess what? The Most High Heavenly Father is going to be avenged upon you or the children of of of. Israel, the righteous elect, are going to be avenged. The book of Revelation 18 and 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and thou and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Yahweh hath avenged you on her. What does it mean to avenge? The word there is krima, which reminds you of karma. All right, it means to decree, a judgment, a condemnation of wrong. All right, the decision, rather severe or mild, which one passes on the fault of others. In forensic sense, all right, the sentence of a judge, the punishment with which one is sentenced, condemn condemnatory sentence, penal judgment sentence, a matter to be judicially decided, a lawsuit, a case in court. And we have a, a lawsuit against your ass, man. Because of the things that you have done unto us and have been doing unto us. 
And as the scripture says within the book of James, that you slay the innocent and they doth not resist you. See, we have not tried to war against you. We have not tried to physically take you down. The only thing that we've been doing is out of the word of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai telling you your judgment and your sentence that's getting ready to come upon you. The scripture says this, the book of Jeremiah 51 and 35, the violence done unto me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. And the inhabitants of Zion, shall the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldeans shall Jerusalem say. Let me read that once again. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. So the blood of the children of Israel. All right. Is, is, is upon this place. This place is filled with our blood. And that blood is crying out against you. Read it on. Therefore does say, Yahweh, behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee. I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whoop. In their heat, I will make their feast, and I will make them drunken. That they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake except Yahweh. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he goats. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to bring you down. And the scriptures say you shall sleep a perpetual sleep. This place is about to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. And that's after all of the humiliating and terrible things that Yahweh Bashmi Shai is about to bring upon this place. Even until this day, you're doing what is known as modern day lynchings. All right, you're shooting uh, Jake's down in the streets. All right, you're killing them. And you're, and you're holding yourselves not guilty. And the scripture says that. In Zechariah 11 and 5, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be Yahweh, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. See, you, you, you slay us, and you hold yourselves not guilty. All right? You acquit yourselves in the courtroom. Just like back in slavery, you know, a slave couldn't testify. All right, a slave had no rights. You did whatsoever you wanted to them. After slavery, all right, they had no rights to testify against you in court. They can testify against another, you know, so-called Negro or so-called black or so-called Indian. But they couldn't testify against you, no matter the gruesome things that you do. And in this day, the things that you do can be caught on camera. Your face, you left your DNA at the scene, you left your blood, you left a swab of your of, 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 of your of your spit, you left your fingerprint, you left a, a, a note saying that you did it, and you still get off. Because your judicial system is fucked up. It's not based off of the just laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's not based off of the law, statutes, and commandments is based off of whatever law you decide to make up an unrighteous de de uh, decree that you have prescribed so that you could fill your jail systems with, with so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans under the 13th uh, uh, Amendment. You create so many different laws to make a man an offender so that you can find a way to, to profit. So there's no true justice in this place. Every time you go to a court, you're guilty when you're going up against the, 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 the court, when you're going up against the, um, you know, the police, when you're going up against whoever. And that's the reason why the scripture says this. When you go into the book of Sirach, the eighth chapter, the 14th verse, go not to 
law with the judge, for he would judge for him according to his honor. So you're going to the law, you know, uh, uh, with uh, against this system that is fucked up. But guess what? They're going to judge according to their uh, to their honor. And that's the reason why we're waiting on the true judge. That's the reason why we're calling on Yahweh Shai. That's the reason why we're asking that Yahweh Shai do save now. Because when he comes back, he's going to give a righteous judgment. He's going to put his foot up your ass. The book of Acts 17 and 31 because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Wherefore, he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead. So who was that that was raised from the dead? That's speaking of Yahweh Shai. So the day is coming when Yahweh Shai is going to judge this earth in righteousness. And you're going to be paid back for the things that you have done. John 5 and 22. For the father judge of no man, but have committed all judgment unto the son. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which have sent him. So you think that when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to ignore those souls that have been crying out before the throne of him because of the things that have been done to them in the earth. The book of Revelation, the sixth chapter, in the ninth verse, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Yahweh, holy and true? Does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see, the saints, even the saints, going back to the time of the, of the, the disciples that were killed, you know, the prophets that were killed, all the way up until now. You, high priest Abba Bivens, you know, all of, all of you are going to be avenged for the things that you have done unto his righteous. Who, whomsoever you be and even what you have done unto the Lord because remember the scripture says that the Lord is angry with those that have killed him Revelation 1 and 7 behold he coming with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierce him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so Amon so there's a 2,000 year old grudge that our Lord have for the for the for the, 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 the murdering of him. And then he said on top of that, whatsoever you have done unto the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. And that's the reason why it says that when our Lord comes back, he's gonna cry like a travailing woman. Because he's going to let all of that anger out all at once. And he's going to take that, that, that wrath that's stored up inside of him. That, that jealousy, that anger, that vengeance. Isaiah 42 and, and, and 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man and shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yeah, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing one woman. I will destroy and devour at once. So he's going to let go all of that anger that's pumped up inside of him against you Edomites. And against you wicked of the nation of Israel and against the two the, the two thirds of the nation of Israel and against the heathens. See, ain't none of you going to get acquitted. All of the wicked are going to receive the judgment that is stirred up for them. Every man shall receive that which was done in their body, rather good or rather evil. So you Edomites ain't about to be acquitted. All right, in this day, you're being reproached 
for the things that your forefathers did. And spiritually, in the reincarnation, you are your forefathers. But because sentence against the evil work has not been executed uh, uh, speedily, you think yourselves to be in good case. So in your mind, you're thinking that you for, uh, 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 got away. You're thinking that the Heavenly Father has, has, has acquitted you. The book of Psalms 10 and 11, he have set in his heart, Yahweh hath forgotten, he hideth his face, he will never see it. Arise, O Yahweh, O power, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn Yahweh, and have said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite, to require it with the hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the help of the fatherless. So what does it mean that the heavenly father will, requ will requite it? The word requite is the word nathan within the Hebrew. To give, to put, to set, to give, bestow, grant, permit, ascribe, employ, devote, consecrate, dedicate, pay wages. So, so pay wages. You about to be paid back for the shit that you have done unto us, man. And to grab that word requite within Google, it means to make appropriate, return, return for a favor, service, or wrongdoing. So Yahweh Shimi Awashai will pay your ass back. You about to be paid back, bitch. <laughs> 